country in the midst of a national crisis involving police brutality and race, Israel has come under fire for its treatment of Ethiopian Jews. Protests turned violent over the weekend. Many are angry about a video that surfaced which shows police assaulting a uniformed Israeli soldier of Ethiopian descent. B.J. Barhaney is, was born in Ethiopia and she immigrated to Israel at seven years old and served even in the Israeli army. After moving to the United States, she founded the organization Beta Israel of North America to raise awareness about Ethiopian Jews and their history and culture. And she's here in our studios. Welcome to Arise America. Thank, Thank you so you much for being me. here. I do appreciate it. You know, so first of all, just share with us your personal experience uh, and background growing up in Israel as an Ethiopian native? Okay. Uh, well, um, in terms of the whole uh, Aliyah, emigration of Ethiopian Jews to Israel, uh, started back about 40 years ago. And that happened because Ethiopian Jews felt the need, the urge, to live in Israel where they can practice Judaism freely. Um, so uh, we, my family and I, uh, freely decided to leave Ethiopia. Uh, nobody rescues us. Uh, we left whatever we had mm -hmm. in order to be among our brothers and sisters. And there is a lot of notion of um, uh, that Ethiopia has been saved and rescued, and that kind of create uh, a way of marginalized uh, people, uh, pe community mm -hmm. that Somebody is always doing something for the Ethiopian Jews, and this is where it kind of creates the division or separation, and you know a lot of uh, frustration somewhat. Bj, give me give me some specifics of what the plight of an Ethiopian Jew in Israel is. What is life like? Where is the dis uh, disparity seen? Okay, as of now, there is about 135 Ethiopian Jews living in Israel. Uh, M big number of Ethiopian Jews, been, they've been uh, born in, in Israel and they serve in the army and would like to be in a situation where they are uh, treated equally uh, like anybody else and without any special treatments. But uh, because of a lot of incidents and issues that, uh, I mean, if you go back in 91, there was the issue of the blood, uh, when Ethiopian Jews donated blood and their blood was thrown away because of the suspicion it might have contamination of AIDS and stuff like that. And not long ago, about three years ago, we had issues with the uh, housing where Ethiopian Jews were not allowed to rent or couldn't rent an apartment in a certain area because they are black. So those kind of issues keep uh, collecting and adding and adding until the point that kind of bursts and people are asking, treat us equally. We are here, we are born, we are citizen. So we want to see a change where Ethiopian, uh, I mean, you know, Israelis and Ethiopian Israelis are, mm -hmm. are treated equally. Tell me about the protests that are happening week and, uh, this week and the message with this protest. Is it is it to raise awareness, to start the dialogue, which is very often the case here in the United States, or are there specific policy demands that are a part of this protesting? In terms of, uh, I mean, policies, what I, uh, me as an Ethiopian Israeli that uh, grew up there, uh, the demand I will see, I uh, will ask is uh, to treat us equally where we can come to a, a dialogue and, and request whatever is there, uh, that we are uh, studying on the same level. You have an Ethiopian born, uh, from Ethiopian ancestry born, and Israeli. When they finish, uh, they you know when they finish high school, they go to the army and so forth. They're going to finish law school, and they both have great, uh, the same grades. We would like to be in a stage where they both have the opportunity, and they are not going to be judged uh, because of their background or because of their colors. This is where we like to see. You've been in the United States for 15 years now. Came in 2000. Uh, how closely? does the parallel between the way African Americans were treated, particularly through the civil rights era, and even today, track with what the reality of Ethiopian Jews have been in, in Israel? Well, is there a similarity there? Because it's, it seems like it's similar. There is some similarities, but you know, uh, discrimination, uh, discrimination and ignorance uh, of people uh, is all over the world. It's universal. It's universal. So I would say many times I will, uh, you know, uh, here in New York, I will speak in Hebrew. People will come and say, "How can you speak in Hebrew?" That ignorance of there is no black Jews. Uh, mm. There couldn't be, you know, 
there is no knowledge, there is no much, is, there is a plateau, one point of understanding who is who, mm -hmm. and that creates kind of attention and misunderstanding. Yeah, it's as much about correcting the ignorance and the misperception as anything else. Correct. I yeah. mean, if people are willing to learn uh, and understand about the diversity, not within just the, the Jewish world, mm -hmm. uh, that would be a better understanding and a better Israel uh, for and the future. And that would be a better world in, in many ways. Vijay, thank you very much. It's thank a pleasure you for to having with you. Wish you all the best. Thank you.